Oh, here you go. It's all in our museum. And Tristram Hunt, by the way, uh, you should have stuck to working with Ed Billipede because now you're Plank of the Week. Thank you to Laura Dodsworth, thank you to Rafe, <laughs> thank you to Amanda, thank you to Andre Walker, uh, thank you to Tim, uh, who's here as well, and uh, thank you to Chuck for not screwing it up. This is Plank of the Week. I'll be back later. <laughs> <laughs>
are united in praise for her, in her stoicism, her strength, and indeed the overriding message that she says rather self-effacingly as, you're not alone, you are not alone. I have cancer, I'm telling everyone, but I am not alone. So amid the message uh, on video, she said that tests after the abdominal operation, remember this abdominal operation, kept her in hospital for 13 days. I know from my own time in hospital that they like to get patients out there because after a period of that time, you are vulnerable to getting MRSA. So they like to try and get you out and continue that treatment at home. She may not have been ready to leave, but they said, you can go home and convalesce. And then the tests came out and they found cancer cells there. And this came as a huge shock. Of course it did, she's 42. William and I have been doing everything we can to manage this privately for the sake of your, our young family. Ah, our young family too, because she is our royal. She is the wife to the heir to the throne. She is our future queen. Not enough that our current king is also dealing with cancer. The Daily Mail says, I'm well, I'm getting stronger every day, and I'm going to be okay. And just turning to page seven of the Daily Mail, uh, which is uh, this article by Richard Kay, stripped of its two most charismatic stars. The monarchy is facing a profound crisis, but it will survive because it always does. And that picture really sums up everything, the relationship that Princess Catherine and King Charles have with each other. Um, they are a united family and notwithstanding the fellas in California, but the whole point is that the family that are still here really are united. And Richard opens up his article by saying he will need every bit of his strength, every last ounce of resilience. Never have the blows come quite so hard and quite so fast. First his father and now his wife's, as all those to Prince William acknowledge, he has never ducked a challenge nor failed to face adversity as he so memorably demonstrated as a 15-year-old boy, how can we ever forget when the gaze of the world descended upon him after the death of his mother, Princess Diana? So the papers are full of it. 03444991000. Let's talk about the kids as well. Because she's got three children under 10. So the first thing you're going to think about having a diagnosis like this is, what about my kids? What about when I get older? What about if I get older? You know, all these kind of dark feelings that you have when you have this kind of thing. How should she have broached the shock of her cancer diagnosis to her children? She has spoken to them. They have had a bit of time in advance of making this announcement to tell the children in a way that you tell children. I've got young children. God forbid I should tell them something like this. I have no idea how I would broach such a subject. I have confidence in them. They are very bright, beautiful young children, but it's still <laughs> something that would live with them for the rest of their lives, should I have to tell them. So, God forbid I have to do that. I don't want to do that. I haven't got a reason to do that. But my question is to you, uh, how should she have broached the shock of her cancer diagnosis to her children? 03444991000. And if you've got um, personal experience of having a cancer diagnosis, be you a personal sufferer or indeed someone who's been on the end of a, a shocking announcement from their own parent earlier in life or in recent times, call us now 03444991000 and uh, we'll go to Philip in just a moment but first let's see the full speech, the full announcement in the gardens of the palace with Princess Catherine. I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. 
My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock, and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. As you can imagine, this has taken time. It has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment. But most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be OK. As I've said to them, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body and spirits. Having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance too as is the love, support and kindness that has been shown by so many of you. It means so much to us both. We hope that you'll understand that as a family, we now need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. My work has always brought me a deep sense of joy and I look forward to being back when I'm able. But for now, I must focus on making a full recovery. At this time, I'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. Please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. And I think that was the reason why both the king and the princess finally told the public about their cancer diagnosis in a way that previous generations didn't. And because the media is so joined up, because the media spotlight is literally every second, if you type Catherine or King Charles into Twitter or X, you will get some tweet, some malign, some nasty, some supportive into your Twitter feed, into your X feed every sort of minute of the day and night from across the world. And so the palace have made this decision to tell us the full extent and also to cover over the vacuum uh, of all the lies and all the spin and all the, the stuff that's been going on about her, the conspiracy theories, they come to an end now. And that's what we're about here at Talk TV. We're here to discuss how she should handle this situation with her children and if you indeed have stories about cancer that you'd like to share with us, any advice that you'd like to give to the princess, anything that you'd like to share with us here on Early Breakfast, you're welcome, 0344 499 As promised, it's Philip in Stockport next. Hello, Philip. Good morning, Johnny. Nice Good morning, to speak Philip. to you. Nice to speak to you. I'm just... Oh, I'm shaky. I just think it's disgusting that Kate has had to sit on a park bench and tell the world what's up that she's being forced to by these horrible newspapers who are making up stories about her. And indeed, social uh, media, it's not always the papers, it's celebrities no, no, with very big followers also. on Twitter, for example. Well, they want naming and shaming because they're mm. disgusting. I'm termed ill, I've got cancer at 49, I'm, I'm 66 sorry. now. I'm sorry. And I lost my mum, I nursed my mum and my brother with cancer, they both passed. And I just think it's personal. You shouldn't have to sit there and tell her. She has a personal life, even though she's a princess. The only it thing is, Philip, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's true. And of course, in the past, I mean, the Queen was a geriatric. She was old, but we didn't know the extent of her no. illness. We just had, we, she just withdrew from public life because actually she was very old. We don't actually know how she passed away. And indeed, George the Sixth had a lung removed in the palace, didn't he, uh, with cancer? Yeah. He was a bit of a smoker, I think, as well. Yeah. But these days, Philip, um, such is the vacuum of knowledge that we had until six o'clock yesterday, look at the lies that were told about her. In fact, you probably heard in our news bulletin at the top of the hour, one slep has just come out and said, I'm really sorry for telling whoppers on, on my social media and shame on yeah. them, actually. Well, on this morning I was watching your programme yeah. and uh, there was Lady Sumba, I can't think of a second name, and she was saying that uh, they think some, one of the American newspapers 
has paid 200000 to one of the nurses to get the details, and this is why she's had to come out before the American newspapers tell the story. As allegations were yesterday, um, indeed. Um, well, it's disgusting, isn't it? It's just, I, I just don't know, it beggars belief. It, it does. Anyway, uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel for her and the king. I'm every day, I'm living every day, and I've been fighting it for 18 years, and it's finally got me now, so... Good luck to her and I wish her all the best. Oh, indeed, Philip. Well, thank you very much for sharing your personal story. Philip is terminally ill with cancer and has had it since he was 49. He's now 66. And I just wonder if you have cancer or if you have someone in your world that has it, I wonder if it heightens your sense of life that you must do things now. You know, I'm just going to talk here from a personal point of view, which is... Um, I lost um, <clears throat> a friend about three months ago who is exactly my age and we grew up together and he was the best of class. He was the cleverest kid, he was the tallest, he was the brightest, <laughs> he was all those things. He always beat me at everything even though I was supposed to be the better player at it. And uh, cancer got him and because he was such an intelligent guy... Um, he dealt with it in such a stoic way as though, yep, I know I'm going to be switched off, so I'm going to enjoy myself. And I know I'm terminally ill. He talked with such bravery. He can't have been like that all the time. He wasn't a machine. And even in his last few months, his father passed away. So he did his, he wrapped up his personal affairs whilst also being terminally ill. <laughs> you know, what an amazing man he was. And... You know, he, what he did was he came off his medication, his chemotherapy, because, of course, it was destroying his quality of life. And he knew that if he came off the chemotherapy, it might hasten his end, but he could then go and live a life. And so they took a family holiday, which must have been an absolute treasure trove of memories for his young children. So I'm just wondering if someone in your family... Um, has cancer, has it heightened your sense of life with them, your, your every moment with them? And also, I'd like to know, because she's got children of just, you know, under 10 years old, and there's three of them, she'll be thinking about the future. God forbid that they have to grow up without her, but, you know, they say she's OK and that she's getting stronger and that I'm going to be OK. But you can't help but thinking when you're faced with cancer like this, what the future might help behold. So how should she broach the shock of her cancer diagnosis to her children? She's had time outside of the spotlight to do that before going public like, like this. 0344 499 uh, Wayne uh, texts, and you can too on 87 Travel 2. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, Johnny, I blame the media and the press, and they bullied her to speak out as they wouldn't leave them alone. Um... The thing about the thing about this is, you know, we're talking about this because, you know, you want to talk about it. And I think if you do it in a responsible way and you cut out all the conspiracy theories and you cut out all the vacuum and we talk about what we know as a collective experience of cancer, then I think uh, we're doing a better and more responsible job as a media. And you're welcome to join us. 0344 499 1000. And we've got Julian Drucker coming up in the show later on. He'll be reviewing the papers with me and talking about this story and also taking your calls, 0344 499 1000. Should we go to Norwich and speak to our old friend Eric? Good morning, Eric. I beg your pardon? We're going to speak to Susan in Leicester. <laughs> Hello, Johnny. Hello, Susan. How are you doing? Hello. I, just, I called in because I've, had to, I had, I've previously had breast cancer and I had to tell my 13-year-old autistic son that I got cancer. And it, when you have to tell a child that you as a parent have got a cancer, you're actually taking away their childhood. Mm. And it's, it's the hardest thing in the world ever to do is tell them. Um, and you have to keep telling them because, of course, they'll be lying in bed looking at the ceiling, yeah. wondering about their life after you've told them. That's, that's so you right. have to cuddle also, them and then, and, you, know, and, you know, there's these kind of things. Yeah, but you know, like with Princess Kate, yeah. she likes her children to run wild and run free and enjoy their childhood. And she's got had to tell them she's got cancer. And you're taking that freedom, that spirit, 
And that's what they've... And also, she's had to get her head round the fact that she has got cancer. Because it takes your time. Because you think, it's never going to happen to me. So when you told yourself, it's like, it's you for six. And you have to get your own head around it. How she managed to go in front of the cameras and, te- one, tell her own children and then tell the rest of the world. Phenomenal. But also, I will say this, Johnny. Macmillan Cancer have booklets for teenagers and for little children, and hopefully she's got the right support because she works with little children and that's her speciali- mm. speciality area. Mm, indeed. But she's ha- I'm absolutely so angry with social media and the Americans for their behaviour. Not so much our press because they seem responsible and, <laughs> may I say, mature. I think it's social media and the Americans with a little help from in-laws to add a f- bits of spice and a bit of nastiness. Yeah. And they just want to put... Yesterday, I just wanted to put my arms around her and give her a big hug. Right. But obviously, she's royal. And hopefully, she's <laughs> gone away somewhere, perhaps with her mum and dad and a family, quiet place to, to get her head around it as well as receive treatment. Because it's about your mind as well. Because you never think it's going to happen to you. Susan, I know that she would accept a hug from you because she's that <laughs> kind of person. that She has emerged into the royal family as a commoner you know she's uh, she's one of us and i think that's kind of one of the reasons why we love her so much can we just talk briefly about your situation <laughs> because you got breast cancer in 2018 yeah then uh, thank then, goodness then, you're still then, with us so yeah, how yeah. are you in remission is everything okay yeah i've gone five years but what happened with me was my son had surgery in 2017 for spinal surgery we thought right. we we're going to lose him mm. then my partner died in 2017 then my son had foot surgery in 2018, and while he was being sorted out with foot surgery that went drastically wrong, then I had, had a routine mammogram. It saved my life. Gosh. Screening saves life. But then, after that, my da- I, besides telling my son and showed him how you can get better, my dad was diagnosed with a brain tumour. <sighs> <laughs> so my son's had a double whammy in his... Life. He's 20 now, but he's autistic and was born with spina bifida, so he's had a lot of issues. Right. But he's, he loves Leicester City. <laughs> well, that's, that, is, that is good and bad, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> it's a bit of everything at Leicester. At the moment, yeah. And, and, and actually, Leicester City saved his life when they won. But for me, not only did my dad have a brain tumour, but I fell and broke my hip. So my mum was looking after two people. My dad, obviously, with his brain tumour, was treated appallingly. Yeah. But I, I can't tell you the brilliant care. I couldn't have been treated any better, you know, in Leicester with the breast cancer team in Leicester. Give a big shout up to, you know, the yeah. team. Wonderful. Yeah. But I have, I, I was, I personally was born with uh, cerebral palsy. Then, obviously, I had the breast, can- uh, uh, breast cancer. But why they thought the cancer had spread, they found out I got multiple sclerosis. Oh, my goodness. So I now um, live with MS and CP, and do you know what? I've still got a sense of humour. I still you, you, it's more concrete than men, so I'm all right. Well, you know, thank you for sharing your story Medical of immense stuff. proportions. Um, but I think <laughs> once... Have, John, it's like watching you. You have to smile. Life, you take, you know, I look outside and I see the tulips coming up. Uh. I see... When I see a blue sky, I know it's simplistic. No, but, you know, it's, that's the idea. You have a heightened sense of life, don't you, when you are ill and when you're faced with the possibility that you're not going to live forever. But you know what I said to the oncologist when she told me I got breast cancer? Because I got cerebral palsy. I'm paralysed down one side. Right. It's funny, Johnny, because the CP affects the right side of my body and the MS now affects the left side. It's very funny. Right. But I said to the oncologist... It's a good job because the breast cancer affected the right side of my body. So if it were going to affect any... And she, she didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Right. <laughs> but I'd advise nobody to smoke because the first question right. they ask is, do you smoke? And it's the most loveliest thing for me to say, no, I've never put a cigarette in my mouth. Well, thank goodness for that. Uh, but yeah. Susan, um, thank you very much for your call. I just want to say to you, the heightened thing that you said to us, the most important message was that if you talk to your child... You have to realise before you go about it that you're going to take their childhood away from well, them at that point and you're going to have to cuddle and hug them. Not just at that point, you can't yeah, go away scared. at that point. I think they get scared to come near you, especially if you've had surgery. Mm-hmm. That photograph 
didn't show her with the children sitting on her stomach. That's mm. how I knew it was genuine, because the children weren't sitting anywhere near where she'd had surgery. Mm. And that's what... And it must have been so... It was harder to tell her children than the rest of the world, trust me. Well, thank goodness that picture's now expunged to <laughs> history and that we don't have to suffer that anymore, and we're talking the truth here. Susan, thank you very much indeed. We wish you continued good life and good health and a good sense of humour because you are packed with it, Susan. Thank you very much indeed. Now, if you're affected by what you're listening or hearing uh, this morning or, or watching, please visit Talk TV uh, at our website, talk.tv slash helplines. For more information, there is a lot of help there available to you. And of course, you can go to the NHS and type in help. And on Google, you can go to the NHS because, as was said, there are a lot of booklets about dealing with the sort of crises within families and how you tell your children. Good morning, Den. When I was 14, I lost my mum to cancer. You never know the time frame, so spend time with your family individually as well as a family group. Make good memories to enable them to hang on through the dark times. Den, thank you very much for that. I lost my father to um, esophageal cancer in 2002, and he was very young. Um, luckily, he had me when he was very young, so I lost him when I was 34. And uh, even though he was uh, very young indeed, uh, I'm grateful for the short time that I enjoyed him in our lives together. But it was a brutal cancer, and from the diagnosis uh, six weeks later, unfortunately, it took him out. But we did spend time together. But I'm also pleased to say that we spent a lifetime together as well, so I hope that... Uh, you have a relationship as strong as that I had with my dear late father. We remember him this morning and your calls are all welcome. And in just a moment, we'll take a short break and we'll speak to Eric from Norwich. Very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong.
Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Now, from the get-go um, last night, uh, I was tweeting about the show, and obviously we all know about what's happened. It's not a case of if you're waking up to this, because people already know, such as the personal nature of the news cycle. It's just in our ears and in our eyes, and it broke, obviously, during uh, the 6 o'clock news uh, sort of time. Uh, Vince tweeted me immediately, and he says, Morning, Johnny. My grandfather and my father died of cancer. And I've at 46, I've had it twice at uh, ages of 24 and 35. Chemo, uh, I'm going to quote him here, chemo is an arse, OK? I got sepsis twice during my treatment. Family and positive mental attitude is everything. I'm nine years in remission, says Vince. And bless each day that I can have with my wife and my two boys. But telling my five-year-old boy at the time was the hardest thing ever seeing daddy feel ill, losing his hair, and in and out of hospital was actually harder than the treatment itself. A five-year-old has no idea. A nine-year-old is carefree and sort of takes it along with their life, but you don't know the long-term impact of such a terrible piece of news. When I was nine, I lost a friend in class to leukaemia and you know when you're nine years old, you don't, I mean, you, you know it's a shock. It was a terrible shock to me. But looking back now that I'm in older age and I'm thinking of the 40 odd years that she left, she, that's, that since she's left us, she never had a chance to live her life at all, at all. And I think about her quite a lot. Her name was Claire and she was a very defined personality. I know that when you're older, you sometimes look at nine year olds and you think, well, they're just children and everything. But as a fellow nine-year-old, I do remember her having a tremendous moral compass and being really quite a mature little girl. And I just think of the terrible ways, the contribution she could have made. Who knows what she might have been. She would have been a grandma by now, maybe. That's the tragedy of cancer. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. And when you experience these things, uh, you, you, all the ideas, memories of cancer in your life come back. I lost my Uncle Jeff in something as far back as 1975 when I was eight years old. And I remember the shock of being told uh, that he had passed away and it was leukaemia. And I can't help but thinking because it was, I mean, literally a half a lifetime ago that he may have well survived today with the kind of treatment that we have. Oh dear, oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. The Sun gets it right by saying, Kate, you are not alone, because that's what Kate said at the end of her broadcast to the nation, which was released on Twitter and via our news bulletins. And last night, uh, you spoke to us about how you were feeling after you heard the news of Princess Catherine's diagnosis. We wish them well. If Kate Middleton has got cancer and that's we, we found that out tonight that right, yeah. that's been reported and we hope that Wish they recover them. and everything's good, you know. Mm -hmm. So what else can be said about that? Well there's been it seemed to be under the cost for a while, but I hope she recovers and also the king as well, I hope he recovers. You know? You know, say, well, hang in there, but maybe because they're the royal family, there will be more uh, awareness about this, and maybe they will, you know, um, do more research with regards to female health, because uh, there's a lot. Because I'm going, I, I, I know what she's going through, because I have my own, you know, ex stuff that I'm going through right now. I think we should be supportive of these people that are going through this. Yeah, respectful of what they're going through. I mean, yeah. I, we've probably Respect all been them. through you know, family members we're, that have had cancer and... We're, we're, always, we're always told these days to respect everyone. Be kind. And be kind. And now's the time to do that for them. Yeah. Indeed. I'm going to be straight up here. I'm having a few tweets 
which are from disgruntled people who are suspicious of the media. So Mark has texted us, Kate asked to be left alone to deal with this, so true to form, the media doesn't stop talking about it. An absolute disgrace. Mark says, give it up already, geez. Please just stop this jibber-jabber, says Billy Bleach. Why are you so obsessed with this? It's her business and nothing to do with anyone else. There's a far more important things going on in the world right now. And then he libels Israel, so well done to you. Uh, Billy says, what an amazing person Susan is. Susan from Leicester, who called with some beautiful messages of immense, immense suffering, but the triumph of her human spirit is something else. And I'm going to pull that, push that to one side and say, nonsense. We're here as the sounding board of the nation when people want to talk about this. People who have personal stories want to talk about this. So the heartless, you can do whatever you want. You can engage with us if you want. But for people who really want to talk about it, and we are a bit of a self-help group this morning on 0344 you are helpful. And here's why. This one from regular listener viewer Pauline Andrews. Morning to you, Pauline. How are you doing? I didn't know this about you, uh, Pauline. Good morning, Johnny. Unfortunately, we lost our son three years ago to cancer. Our princess has inspired everyone speaking of this dreadful illness. It was really hard for our son to speak to his children and say that he would not survive. I hope those who spoke ill of Catherine are ashamed, and I agree as well. 03444991000. The job this morning, of, of course, is to talk about this and to share some of your experiences, because everyone's got a cancer story, haven't they? Everyone. You know, if it's not you, it's someone near you in your family. And um, the other thing that we're going to do is shut, the, shut down all the conspiracy. We're only going to talk about all the things that we know. And the Daily Mail says, I'm getting stronger every day and I'm going to be OK. And that is the overriding message. The Times says this, uh, I'm going to be OK. An emotional video tells of her major surgery and chemotherapy. The king, who has cancer himself, hails the bravery of his beloved daughter-in-law. And I think we will understand if the royal family isn't quite as active as it is going around the country. But when they do go around the country, opening up, I don't know, big centres or, um, you know, going to garden fates and cutting the ribbon, I know that there'll be a huge amount of support in the country as well. And I just wonder what you think to the message and how stoic she's been. Look, she looked a little bit pale. She looked like she'd lost a little bit of weight. Uh, she did still look very beautiful, didn't she? 03444991000. Your reaction to the princess and some of the things that you heard uh, when we went out onto the streets and talked to people locally and nationally about the situation. Let's go to Eric from Norwich, as I promised. Eric, good morning. Uh, morning, Johnny. Good to see you. And uh, God bless Pauline. Um, God bless Pauline. Absolutely. Yeah. God, yeah. God, God bless her. And, and Kate... Um, Yes, yeah, so I've had uh, I've had uh, cancer twice. Um, once in the face, a melanoma, and once uh, prostate. Um, so I'm still under treatment for. Although mm. they say that's gone, but um, I was very secretive about mine. I didn't tell anybody, and uh, then I did tell people. And I wished that I would have told people straight away that I've got this cancer. I'm undergoing treatment, and uh, they told me the outcome was very good. Um, it was going to be very good, and that I would die with it rather than of it. Gosh. And, um, you know, I think every, every case is individual, really. You have to think about it and think, what should I do? And that, that's, that's an awful situation to be in, really. Eric, in this modern day, you have to be like Superman, particularly if you're a bloke. You have to go, yeah, mate, I'm fine, I'm fine. And you're not fine, are you? And it is OK to tell people, I, I, God forbid I have to make that uh, sort of announcement. I don't know what I'd do as well. I have absolutely no idea. Uh, but I just wonder, it, with Princess Catherine, who is obviously one of the most famous people in the world and was subject to such a huge amount of speculation and slurs and lies before six o'clock yesterday, do you think she's done the right thing to close this down? Oh, yes. I, I, wish, I, I wish she'd have done it before. Mm. Um, um, she's... But the, tr the problem is, you see, she must have been absolutely terrified at 42. My daughter yeah. had breast cancer, and she, um, and that's the worst I felt. When I got it, I thought, well, 
you know, I'm in my seventies. Um, how long have I got anyway? And uh, but when my daughter got it, I was absolutely with tears and everything. And uh, that that was a that was the most awful thing. So that's why I, I really felt for Paul Pauline there. And um, she, when you lose a child, I don't think you ever get over it. You know. I'm sure. But also, she needed a little bit of time to tell her little prince and princesses, didn't she? She did, yes. And um, could I just say, Johnny, yes, please, um, uh, that men who don't go, uh, if they're, if, 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 when you know you've got something wrong, is when you're wee and front, uh, funny or something mm. happens to your sex life, mm -hmm. um, that's the time to go. Uh, if you're over 50, you can get these, um, you can get these, uh, you know, the PSA done, the uh, blood yeah. tests, which is not very painful. And every test I went through, I had a month of uh, radiotherapy for five days a week, two days off, five days a week, two days off. There's no pain. That's just, that's just a chore, a real bad chore. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the worst was when I had the biopsy. That is a little bit painful. It's more uncomfortable than painful. And so if you've got the slightest problem, Please, please go, because that could save your life. I'm still here, and my prognosis was very good, and according to my doctor, Dr. Nobbs, that's gone. Well, you know, you are a source of inspiration, I'm sure, Eric, and thank you for always uh, phoning the show with something positive to say. Isn't it amazing? The people that call the show then tell us about their uh, scrapes with cancer, their personal stories. We learn so much about each other on this show and it's uh, very I'm very grateful thank you for being so open on this day of days three children under 10 for Princess Catherine how should she have broached the shock of a cancer diagnosis to her children as Susan from Leicester said very very helpfully before that when you tell your young child do remember that you're bringing their childhood to an end so you have to try and do it in a way that tells the truth, but without destroying them mentally. Because at the end of the day, when you leave their bedroom, having told them, they're gonna look at the sky like that. They're gonna look at the ceiling. They're gonna be on their own. They're gonna feel terribly lonely. They're gonna be in the playground with their other friends whose parents don't have cancer, whose la 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 life carries on as normal, but they'll be alone with it. So you have to continually cuddle them, take care of them. It's it's a process in telling a child, isn't it? Once you've told them, then what do you do? What do you do when you come home from a hospital treatment and some of your hair is disappearing or that you look a bit pale or that you can't walk up the stairs as fast or all those things, they must be, they must be the crisis of, of crises within families. 0344 four nine nine one thousand now if you're affected by what you're listening to or hearing this morning or watching please visit the talk tv website go to our talk tv helpline section uh, for more information there's a lot of help available to you talk.tv slash helplines um and again um i'm going to push back on the idea that we shouldn't talk about it that we should be leaving catherine alone we are leaving catherine alone uh, we are in complete sympathy with her and we're talking to you about your personal situations with cancer. Lord knows, I'm suddenly realising that throughout my life I've uh, had um, uncles, father, dear friends lost to cancer. Uh, and, you know, it, it brings it all home. And isn't it funny, you know, however you know, high and mighty people are, however strong they are, it's totally arbitrary whether you get it or not, and so many people get it. Are you alarmed at the increase, the seeming increase in younger people getting it? Um, Catherine is just 42 years old. This is Johnny Gould, a very good morning to you. It's early breakfast, and this is Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Oi, right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman is a man.
Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss it. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you've got> <laughs> Yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family, and if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. And a uh, warm welcome to the show. If you've just switched on 03444991000, we're talking about Princess Catherine's announcement that she has begun chemotherapy after being diagnosed with cancer. If you'll remember that she went into hospital for 13 days for abdominal surgery, and when the biopsy came back, they found cancer cells. And so she sat on a garden bench in the palace and told the story of her cancer and that she says she's going to be OK and that we are all not alone. But the royal family uh, is facing up to uh, a life crisis, aren't we? The head of state, our king, has cancer and he's not a young man. And Princess Catherine, 42, is a young woman. 03444991000. I'm just going to wrap up a few other things going on. Because on the day that... Russia vetoed America's attempt to make peace in the Middle East. And there's a lot of noise around it and a lot of kind of things which don't mean anything, like, for example, the two-state solution where we don't really have a Palestinian authority to negotiate meaningfully with. They did talk about bringing Saudi Arabia into the equation, which is meaningful, uh, giving them nuclear weapons, which would start an arms race with Iran, Meanwhile, Russia gets an attack from the very terrorists who are attacking Israel, ISIS. ISIS is Hamas. They're a very similar organization. And it was a sort of Ariana Grande-style attack on a rock concert. And they set fire to the building after machine-gunning people there. Apparently, 100 people are dead. Um, and that story shouldn't escape our attention on this terrible day for our royal family. But that's what's going on. And also, slightly less important, but nevertheless, the playful change of the Cross of St George on the back of the England shirt that we're going to play. I mean, it's not playful at all. It's an attempt, another clumsy attempt at football, including people, when they don't need including. OK, everyone's welcome in football. It's a meritocracy. 
And of course, Gareth Southgate has waved away the flag for Rory. The England manager insists that the row over the St George's Cross is not important. Well, he's got that wrong as well. Um, basically, it's the controversy of the new kit on the back where the neck is. You know, normally that's where they put a little cross of St George. Well, uh, they've recast our cross of St George using purple and blue horizontal stripes, a, a playful update. Um, I don't know if the debate is about the flag needing to be on the England shirt because it hasn't always been there. The most important thing, says Gareth, is to put on an England shirt is the, is the three lions. That's our iconic symbol that distinguishes us from other football teams, the England rugby team and the cricket. And if you're asking, should we be tampering with the cross of St George in my head, if it's not a red cross on a white background it's not the cross of St George anyway so that old chestnut isn't it oh just change it back will you oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand let's go to Michael in Essex and talk about the princess good morning Michael hi uh, good morning Johnny good morning uh, Michael my, 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 may I just say um, uh, very quickly about the Nike shirt yeah uh, had it uh, because they were an American company would, would they ever have done that with, uh, with the American stars and stripes <laughs> can you imagine uh, a pink what, 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 a yeah, pink and purple yeah, yeah. red and white yeah, stripes yeah. no uh, yeah exactly no. But, but let's but let's get back on topic yeah. I um I, I completely agree with all of your callers uh, and one uh, and Eric uh, I, I forgot um where he was from Norwich but the call, yeah um and it, it's not uh, um, um, I, I'm not talking at the moment about family um, so much, but the uh, the actual radiotherapy does not hurt. Right. Uh, bio, but it, it's the biopsy. Right. Although they they give you that, they don't completely um, knock you out for that. But that's the part that hurts. But I, I was in in um, early 2022. Mm. I had a sore throat. I'll, I'll really quickly go through this. Um, I, I had a, what I thought was a sore throat. Mm. I had four different um, types of antibiotics from, from my GP. None of them worked, so they referred me. And I was diagnosed with stage four um, base of tongue cancer. Gosh. I had, um, I had um, 35 sessions of... Um, uh, of radiotherapy. Right. I had to, uh, anybody listening now, that's, uh, when I say uh, they put the mask on, and um, anybody that's been through this will, will absolutely know what I'm talking about. And, and this mask, it kind of like sucks you. They have to fit it so, like so tightly. Um, be, uh, sorry about my voice. No, no. But, I mean, but, uh... but because but because it's base of tongue and that my my. But obviously, your tongue, uh, you, you know, is the way you get that like, is how you speak. It's how you speak. Well, I must, I must say to you, if you've had thirty-five <laughs> treatments of radiotherapy and this is yeah. how you speak, yeah, it's it, obviously it, yeah. worked, Michael, because so, you're uh, speaking uh, very uh, well. Yeah, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and uh, well, I've just cleared my, uh, I've just cleared my throat, right. and and, uh, and I, I, I only always had, important when um, you come on air. Yeah, <laughs> I, I only had um, three sessions of chemotherapy. Um, but but thirty five, um, so I completely I uh, completely get where Eric was coming mm, from. Mm, mm, mm. But but getting back uh, uh, off of me, uh, I was given the the all clear um, yesterday. Oh really? I still have, uh, yeah yeah. Well, congratulations, I, I mate. Had, that is great. Yeah, news. I, I I actually saw my um, oncologist yesterday. I won't name her, but but, but she's from Queen's Hospital in Romford, Essex. Right. I won't name her because I've not asked her, but obviously asked her permission to do this. Sure. But 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 for, but but getting back to Princess Kate, she's got every right to to want privacy because uh, there was times halfway through my my treatment, my my mum took me to every single. I, I'm oh, I, I'm. 53, right. uh, and my mum's in, in, in her 70s, but she <laughs> drove me to every single one of my radiotherapy appointments. Wow, she's she's uh, quite uh, a character, uh, isn't every, she, Michael? Uh, every, uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, every single one of them, uh, we're, we're, without fail. Uh, if she had something to do, no, uh, she would cancel it, you, you know, different appointments since. And I, I mentioned to my oncologist yesterday, just in case people don't realise that um, 
uh, I've had over 120 different appointments since 2022 uh, to, to do with this cancer. Speech and language, my, my, my feeding tube because I couldn't even swallow water. Yeah. So I used, so I had to inject water into. I, I've now got two belly buttons there, <laughs> effectively. But, but uh, uh, Princess Kate, she's got absolutely, uh, you know, I, I know I'm just repeating myself now, but absolutely every right to, if you don't want to appear in public, I couldn't imagine wanting to appear in public that no. there, there, there were times on, on in, in the car on the way back like home when my mum used to drop me back home I didn't say a single word to her no about, but you don't need to when you know someone and yeah. you love someone you can sit with them for hours and not say anything you know yeah so you just know yeah. each other don't you Michael I am absolutely delighted that you have been given the all clear on this day of all days uh, very grateful for your very personal nature of your messages 0344 499 1000 uh, John has texted if you talk about it this morning call it an end after that just talk about something else and just put Kate and William to the back of your mind and let them get on with their lives that's what we're doing here we are sharing our stories about cancer it is omnipresent it's prevalent Younger people are getting this illness more than anyone else before, it seems. We didn't have anyone in the royal family in their 40s with such a public battle against cancer before. I know that they used to keep this stuff to themselves. But then again, we used to see the royal family in their 40s going off and opening things all the time, getting out the roller, absolutely full of health. And suddenly... We are not seeing that, and that is a shock. 03444991000. Should we just look in some of the other papers here? Uh, the Daily Mirror. It's taken us time to explain everything to George, to Charlotte, and Louis, and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. And, you know, that's what um, Susan and Lester said. You know, you have to be worried that you're, you know, when you tell your child. Uh, that you've got cancer, that you're bringing their childhood to an end. Uh, that's a very profound comment, isn't it? Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. And having relayed this three or four minute announcement, which apparently she did in one take, sitting on the park bench in the uh, grounds of the palace, she ends it with something nothing to do with her she's using her cancer as an example of support for all of us whatever the cancer you have or don't have that you've had in your life that maybe thank goodness like our last caller you're in remission um thank goodness for that um at this time i'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer for everyone facing this disease in whatever form please do not lose faith or hope you are not alone. And indeed, uh, King Charles uh, is not alone either this morning. 0344 499 1000. Linda has texted, uh, Hi Johnny, the media like to spin the line that we want to talk about the Princess of Wales. No, we don't, and nor should we. And I think, contra to that opinion, Linda, uh, we do want to talk about it, and we do wish the princess her privacy and you know we are a concerned uh, set of subjects here and you know the royal family are there by our consent because in other countries like France we we withdrew our consent we chopped their heads off didn't we and that's why they don't have a royal family but we do and they're by our consent and so they are like an extension to our own family, and so we talk about them. 03444991000. There's a lovely, lovely picture on page four of uh, your Daily Mirror, um, and uh, here it is. Uh, it's just all of the family together. There's just such lovely pictures of the uh, uh, royal family, um, set pieces. You know, she's our future queen. And uh, a, word to pr a word about Prince William this morning, because his dad is ill with cancer, his wife is ill with cancer, he'll know much, much more than we ever will 
about the extent of the cancer, how it's going, the impact to him as the heir to the throne. He'll know better than us whether his time on the throne is near or far, God, God forbid, and that actually, God willing, if you believe in God, which I do, it's a long, long way away, and Prince Charles, King Charles, I should say, keep making that mistake. King Charles will be on our throne for many, many years to come. The star is very frank. Kate, I have cancer. We're going to start calling her Catherine. Princess Catherine, please. Princess Catherine, 0344 499 1000. After the news at six o'clock, I'm absolutely delighted to have Julian Drucker from Five News helping me review the papers and talk about everything. And obviously, you with your very, very personal stories. Thank you very, very much for sharing them here so, so frankly and so delicately. And some of you are regular callers to the show. And to add that little texture to your lives, to get to know you a little bit better in adversity has been a real privilege this morning. Talk TV, Johnny Gould. This is Talk TV. Never mind the ballot. A brand new look at all things politics from the sun with me, Harry Cole. Watch my big end of the week with no stone unturned. Every Thursday evening, exclusively with the sun. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kingham City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss it. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. that matters, for the opinions that matter, for the stories that matter. Find me, Vanessa Feltz, every weekday at 4pm, only on talk, on TV, on radio, online and on your smart speaker.
and a very good morning to you. This is hour two of early breakfast right here on Talk TV. And if there was ever a morning to have not one but two doctors on the output, it would be this morning. Dr David Bull and Dr Rennie Handekamp will be with you to talk about all the medical issues and the very personal issues of this morning's main story. There's only one story in town, and that is the announcement by the princess herself, Princess Catherine, that she has cancer and that chemotherapy has already begun. Your texts and tweets are extremely welcome. 0344 499 1000. You can either join me on air or even use that number to send a little WhatsApp note, which hopefully we can turn around and play. Uh, Dallas Nash, good morning to you, Dallas. Morning, Johnny. All due respect to Kate and Charles, but let's not forget people like myself who had to carry on working through cancer treatment. I was self-employed, so money, of course, was an issue, as it is for many people who don't have the luxury of being able to take months off. And good morning to Sean. Hello, Hunslet White. How are you, mate? This is your drive time show. I think you're in Australia. Of course I know that. And uh, thank you for your kind words, Sean. Um, it is a difficult session, this. It is difficult to talk about. And when an announcement like this is made, you would think back in your own lives about all the stories of cancer uh, that affected you personally, be they uh, close relatives, brothers, sisters, uncles, fathers, mothers, all this kind of thing. And it's brought it home to me as well this morning. Uh, we wish the princess a speedy recovery. Of course we do, says Sean. I just wish the public relations and comms people would have handled it a little bit better. They appear to have made it worse. And I've got to say, that probably the reason why Catherine sat on the park bench yesterday was to close down all the terrible conspiracy theories and lies from all the social influencers accusing Kate of things that she was not guilty of. 0344 1000 The media plays a huge part, I think, this morning in closing down all those conspiracy theories and lies. And well done to the princess for actually coming out and being exceptionally brave. I'm delighted to have in the studio with me Channel 5 News is Julian Drucker. Hello, good morning. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. Yeah, it's just one of those mornings where a huge story mm. breaks around our royal family. I was hosting uh, overnights here at Talk TV when the Queen passed away and she was lying in state mm. and there were those massive queues and we crossed to the queues. And actually it was heartening to talk about the Queen because it was the end of a magnificent life a life led and we will never forget these moments in our public life will we Julian mm. I mean it was uh, obviously we had the news about uh, the king so recently mm. and uh, yes I was on air yesterday on channel 5 and it was the same drill I mean with with Charles uh, Buckingham Palace said there would be an announcement at 6 and then I think it was about 5:40 where we were told the nature of it this was different yesterday we were told what the message was at about 4.20, um, and we were told there would be, you know, with Charles there was a statement from him. Yesterday, obviously, you know, a video message. Was it embargo uh, at 4.20? Yes, yes. So it you was, had, you it weren't was, allowed to say it until 5? Uh, 6 o'clock it was, right. was uh, embargo to. Um, the video message was recorded by the BBC as these things are pulled, yeah. I don't know if people have heard of that before. Uh, so it was played to newsrooms at quarter past 5, um, and then obviously everybody saw it at uh, six o'clock. But to hear her in her own words doing that video message was just extraordinary, wasn't it? I don't think we've ever, um, you know, seen a member of the royal family speaking so emotively. You know, was yeah. it never, never complain, never explain? Right. I mean, yesterday she was explaining for the most part what was going on. And you know, as you said earlier, that bit at the end where she said about you know, do not lose faith or hope. Um, probably you are not alone. yeah probably the most emotive thing as a, a royal has yeah. ever said yeah i'm just thinking um, you know the king's message which we i love seeing the king's message at christmas because yeah. i'm yes. always seven shandies down and i'm having a lovely time it is genuinely the only day off i get every year mm. and sometimes i don't even get uh, that off i'm sitting there and i'm really enjoying the beautiful palace of the king and obviously the queen and and yeah. it's it's very staged and very beautiful and we've had we've had a good year and we've had a bad year and we're thinking about you at christmas 
and all this kind of thing. But of course, the impact yeah. now because of what you just said, the extreme emotion. Her voice sort of cracked in the middle, and she got on with it. Apparently, it was first take as well. Yes, Julius. yeah. But the nature of the broadcast now, at the Christmas message, that mm. suddenly our royals are becoming quite accomplished broadcasters. Yeah, I mean, she reminded me yesterday, actually, the final bit of the Queen's message during COVID where she channelled Dame Vera Lynn and she did the <laughs> We Will Meet yeah, Again. I yeah. thought it was tonally, you know, obviously completely different, but tonally felt quite similar yeah. to that. I mean, Kate's probably the most loved person in Britain, isn't she? Mm. I think since mm. the Queen passed away. I, I literally can't think of any, any, any then, Yeah, I don't know the rankings. Not since Jack Grealish left Aston Villa. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she really sure. is, isn't she? She absolutely... She's obviously the most loved royal, I would say, the she most is. loved and, person. And Charles is a popular king, yes, isn't he? Yes, yeah. He's yeah. turned it round, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Um, so, you know, just a really uh, difficult year uh, for the royals. We heard about an Annas Horribilis before, didn't we, in 1992. I mean, this is something this is completely nothing, different. I mean, this is yeah. a completely different level, isn't it? Um, so that step, yeah, two, two minutes, uh, 15 seconds yeah. on the bench. And Julian, we're going to play it now. Yeah. Let's have a look at uh, the princess's message. And as I said to Johnny, Johnny said to me before, Johnny, my producer, and there's not two of me, I'm not, I'm not going mad. Johnny said to me, you have to watch it twice to sort of take the message in. So here it is again, if you've seen it before. I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock, and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. As you can imagine, this has taken time it has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment. But most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be OK. As I've said to them, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body and spirits. Having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance too as is the love, support and kindness that has been shown by so many of you. It means so much to us both. We hope that you'll understand that as a family, we now need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. My work has always brought me a deep sense of joy and I look forward to being back when I'm able. But for now, I must focus on making a full recovery. At this time, I'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. And we wish her a full and speedy recovery. But now, Julian, as mm. the story comes out, they've already said the idea of her coming back at Easter to start doing yes. public appearances, even going to church at Easter, which is the most important day in the Christian calendar. They're not going to go to church. They're not going to be seen in public. Yes. Uh, her chemotherapy will be continuing. Uh, we know what chemotherapy mm. can do to someone's appearance. Uh, we know how it can drain a person. I think seeing someone as beautiful as Princess Catherine in the throes of chemotherapy is something that we probably wouldn't be ready for. So this now needs, let's talk about this from a news point of view as news people, this is gonna need managing because mm. again, we're gonna have, if it's not managed correctly by the palace, we're gonna have conspiracy theories coming out, we're gonna have nonsense from the Spanish media, someone lied, something terrible, I'm not gonna repeat it on air a couple of, 
couple of uh, uh, days ago. Um, we need th we need constant reassurance, don't we, from the palace? We'll even need pictures of her. Mm. Um, otherwise, these stories will continue in a vacuum. Well, there were quite detailed notes put out by um, Kensington Palace. Just I've got them here actually. Have you? And they say you know OTR on lots of it on the record. Right. Um, good. Are it, you sure it's not off the record? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was just off the check, record. Just check that, Julia. But it was, uh, <laughs> or is it off the record? Uh, no, there's sort of guy. Yeah, sorry, it is off the. Yeah, Thank there's goodness. guidance as well. Basi basically, okay. It's this saying, is very important. This is like no, the inside track. This is important because this is we're a reputable organisation. Yes, yes, both, yes, both yes. of our networks, and I think it's important that um, at this time of news provision, that you know that you're coming to a trusted partner. In terms of news, we're closing down conspiracy theories. Yes, so, so Julian, go ahead. I mean, basically, the point is they're saying, you know, we're not going to be uh, sharing information. Uh, she has a right to privacy, um, as everyone does. Um, they talk about because obviously, I think it was probably most shocking for people yesterday. We had been told in January that uh, the princess it was non-cancerous. They'd said, and they clarified yesterday um, that at the time they said that. Um, it was thought her condition was non-cancerous and sort of as she explains in the statement just there um, surgery was successful and then post-operative tests subsequently found that cancer had been present um, what's not clear is you know this timeline as you just said about Easter they had said that she'd be back at Easter although they were in the Sunday Times last weekend they were saying you know Easter as in Easter school holidays we wouldn't see her till the end of April um, but it's sort of not clear now in terms of the timeline when we might see her uh, at all. Um, but yeah, as you said, yeah, the Spanish media had been reporting stuff in the last few. I think it's disproved actually by what we now know. There was you know quite lurid stuff. Yeah. But there is this feeling that, and we, you know, we don't know. Um, you know, this uh, alleged data breach at the London Clinic, which is being investigated by the Information Commissioner's Office, it is not clear whether details from that were going to come out in the media and they've done this to head that off. Yeah. I mean, that still isn't quite clear. And it's also, you know, the Mother's Day, and we'll talk about the timeline in the in the newspapers in a moment, but, you know, the Mother's Day thing was only two weeks ago. You wonder why they bothered putting that photo out if they were going to then do this statement so yeah. it feels like they were sort of bounced into doing yeah. uh, what they did yesterday yeah. because of all the speculation that's been going on is there any more guidance or knowledge about the abdominal surgery um there's not there's not really they've given us the uh the timeline of when it happened um we should say actually so this is the telegraph yes yeah, so let's start going through the yeah. stories that you so, uh, you so one together. of the biggest sort of known unknowns about all this was this um moment last month when uh, William didn't go to this memorial service for his uh, godfather King Constantine of Greece. This Remember? must be on the Duke of Edinburgh's side. Yes, yes. Um, and he didn't attend, Camilla attended, Charles wasn't there obviously because uh, he's he was having treatment. Um, there was speculation he didn't go because there was the incident involving uh, his sort of friend uh, Thomas Kingston and then actually Kensington Palace clarified at the time and said it wasn't to do with that so actually it did lead to more mystery but um, all the newspapers today but particularly the Telegraph just saying you know we now know this uh, was the reason this was February the 27th uh, we were told there was a personal reason as to why William wasn't there and as the Telegraph says uh, we now know that was uh, when Kate received that diagnosis I don't know if it was on the day before or or that in particular day uh, but that explains that so that was three weeks ago wasn't it yeah. I suppose almost a month ago um, and that explains that mystery really we saw Camilla that day um, and she as she's now doing is basically sort of representing the royals isn't she it's I mean she's on her own show. isn't she yeah. I mean yeah. who I mean literally who else is there Princess Anne yeah yeah and some princes and princesses, like third cousins, who might have to, have to, oh yeah, the Duchess of the Duchess of Edinburgh, and that at the moment is currently is that Sophie Rees Jones? Yes, yeah, yes. Thank you for that. There's yeah. actually a Duchess of Edinburgh. Duchess now. of Edinburgh. Well, the, one, the, the the late Queen was the Duchess of Edinburgh, but she just obviously wasn't referred what, to. Was her. she was she actually even called that, or is that like a, would you get your head cut off? Or that was one of her titles. It was one, one of, of her titles, many titles. 
Um, yeah. So, yeah, we saw Camilla on uh, Wednesday, yeah. didn't we? Oh, no, sorry, Thursday. She was in Belfast uh, doing royal duties. Obviously, first time she'd been to Northern Ireland without the king. Um, so they carry on. I think we're obviously going to see William less now yeah. over the next few weeks. Um, but, yeah, so this is in, in, in Telegraph. It's just saying, um, it's just summing up the last few weeks. Um <coughs> You know, and th this this is why we didn't see him. This is why we didn't see him, and it's not clear when we're going to see the both of them again. Actually, to be absolutely. Honest. Now, um, there are some people who are staring their careers end this morning, and those are those yes. awful web trolls. We yes. had it in the top of the hour news bulletin where Sleb, who you may have heard of that I haven't heard of, yes, said, "Oh, I'm really sorry." Blake Lively, they were saying, weren't right, they? Blake the Lively, what a name! Yeah. Yeah. Am I am I embarrassing myself by saying I don't know who that is? She is the wife she, of uh, Ryan Reynolds. Ah, oh, is that Wrexham? Yes. Right. It's funny because actually William bringing shame on Wrexham. Yeah, William went to Wrexham on St David's Day. Yeah. And met the other uh, Ryan Reynolds. He, he wasn't is there. the he Prince met, of Wales, isn't he? Yeah, he met the other guy, Rob McElhenney. Yeah, McElhenney. Um, yeah. And Ryan Reynolds. Wanted to be there, couldn't be there. I don't know what Blake Lively tweeted. Actually, I'll have to go back and look. Probably. I think it was the sort of BBL rumours that Kate was having a Brazilian bum lift and all this kind of stuff. So, there, you know, there were different levels of... Is that what BBL is? Yes, on? Yeah. I don't need to look that up later. Every day is a school day, isn't it? This it really... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and thank goodness OTR is on the record. Is it on the... It thank is on goodness the for that, yeah. Right, thank okay, goodness yeah. for that. Well done, Julian. Um, <laughs> so, the, look, there, was, there were various levels of uh, web speculation. There were people link it, saying, oh, is Kate at the Willy Wonka exhibition in Glasgow? So there was that sort of sort of topicality sort of joking, wasn't there? And there was more serious, frankly, vile stuff online, weren't there? Wasn't there just suggesting various stuff had gone on? Um, there will be a hope from Kensington Palace that that will stop now. Thanks to the statement yesterday, I would doubt it. People are now talking very much about Kensington Palace and saying, you know, they threw her under the bus by after the Mother's Day photo. Why was it her who came out and had to apologise? Why was it not William? Well, that's right. And I do wonder whether, in fact, it was her who doctored the picture. And I'm not sure. Mm. I mean, anyway, whatever. She's in it. She says she's an amateur photoshopper and who can yes. argue with that? But what um, we now know is, because this, you know, she started her treatment at the end of February, so right. we now know when she put out those messages, she was already, you know, her, her treatment had begun, she was dealing with that, and then she was having to deal with, you know, frankly, all this criticism about, you know, a doctored photo. So, you know, double pressure on yeah. her. The royal family. family have learned a great deal about news management and mm. all the people around them who should be sacked, actually, because yes. I don't think they're up to the job in the 21st century. This is the Blake Lively statement Go on Instagram, and it's on a black background with a little heart at the bottom, as if that makes it better. Uh, using typewriter font, I'm sure no one cares today, that's right, but I feel like I have to acknowledge this. I made a... S is she American? Yes. I made a silly post around the Photoshop fails. Right. Frenzy and... Oh, man. She actually writes, oh, man, which is, I think, goodness me for us Brits, that that post is mortified today, uh, going up one level at the end of the sentence. I'm sorry. Sending love and well wishes to all, always. <laughs> so now I've heard of Blake Lively. Right. You know what? I'm going to contemplate that. Take a break. Julian Drucker's here. We're going to continue uh, the shame of the web trolls and the threadbare firm. Stay tuned to Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge 
Quite right too. Quite right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. minute, four... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have was moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. the cancer diagnosis and the public announcement by Princess Catherine that she's already undergoing chemotherapy, we have two doctors hosting our breakfast show as always at the weekend, Dr David Bull and Dr René Hunderkamp, and they'll be talking about the medical um, consequences of what's going on, giving you a little bit of light about this, a bit of hope. How does chemotherapy look in 2024? Is it different to how it is? And of course, with David and René's hallmark uh, bedside manner to guide you through breakfast this morning right here on Talk TV. But right now, it's Julian Drucker here from Five News, who's my morning newspaper review. And we turn to page six morning mm. to you. The shame of those vile web trolls who made it so much harder for Catherine. This written by Meg Byram. Yes, uh, we were talking about Blake Lively there. I mean, her sort of stuff online was quite mild compared to the weeks and weeks of stuff, particularly on X, formerly Twitter. Yeah. Um, I mean, if people haven't deleted their posts already, um, they'll probably be doing it um, yeah. today. Um, but so much speculation online, particularly since that uh, Mother's Day photo, people are suddenly experts on photoshopping. It's sort of gone on and on. The mail uh, picks out uh, some of the... Uh, Worst offenders, uh, left wing commentator Owen Jones. Actually, you know, the people who've apologised. Owen Jones apologised last night for speculating about Kate following a string and of it, posts. It, it, he could apologise for a whole host of other things. Yes, us, he, he? Could. Uh, he tweeted, or ex, whatever the verb now is with X, as someone who speculated on this without considering it could be a serious health condition. I'm very ashamed. Uh, TMZ. Not accepted. No. He can off. TMZ. He's not uh, a royalist either. He's obviously. not a royalist. Uh, TMZ, the American Off. gossip site. Interestingly, so they were uh, tweeting prior to this six o'clock uh, embargo last night. I think at about half past five, they were saying there was going to be an update about Kate. So they sort of let the cat out of the bag, rather. Um, they have uh, been facing pressure in the last few hours. Um, to drop a documentary called Where Is Kate Middleton? It aired in the US oh. on Thursday night. Yeah, that had probably the shortest shelf life of a documentary yes. ever. Yes, yeah. Um, but lots of Americans. I mean, obviously the Royals are huge in America. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy Cohen in America, TV presenter. They had been sort of spreading these kind of, uh, what the mail says, are malicious theories. They've been talking about various... 
well, affairs and all this sort of stuff. People were certainly going down all different roads to try and explain where Kate had been. Uh, it all got a bit crazy, really. And Omid Scobie obviously wrote the book about Harry. He, right. posted, he posted a screenshot um, last night, sort of about 4.59, he uploaded a photo of a timer with six o'clock on suggesting there was going to be an announcement um, sort of ticking down. And he faced a lot of criti uh, criticism um, as if he was sort of making light of it. He then deleted this tweet and said he didn't know what the announcement he was He hasn't be. a scoby-do, does he? There you go. Um, That's for you at home. He said he didn't know what the announcement was going to be, he claims. But it was just people getting the tone completely wrong yesterday. And then, you know, this follows weeks of people just... Sharing every type of theory, basically, about where Kate was and the hashtag sort of free Kate and people making light of it obviously now looks terrible in, in the light of day. Now we know what uh, has actually happened. Now, as a fellow journalist, mm. do you use Twitter in a way that you're on air the same way? I know I do. I don't go off on one very often. I might go off on one about football, when there's things that don't yes. really matter. But on really, you know, sensitive issues, big issues, people want to know your position, but you also have to do it in a controlled explosion kind of way. Otherwise, mm. you destroy what you do on air, actually. You destroy the credibility that you have on air if you don't treat it well. Is that, is that kind of the conduct you... I think so, yeah. And of, this was obviously a health thing, wasn't it? I mean, there was very little information from Kensington Palace, but what they did say back in January was that she'd had, you know, serious surgery and she was recuperating. So it was all it was always framed as a health thing. Mm -hmm. So re tonally, I mean, all the people who've got it so badly wrong um, only have themselves to blame. It was clear, you know, the nature of it. The problem was people were saying, oh, Kensington Palace are lying. It's got nothing to do with health. I mean, you know, we know that royal press offices have not been completely clear with the truth in the past but the idea that they would you know basically make up a health thing as a you know sort of subterfuge for something else is was unlikely wasn't it yes really. it, it seems so and uh, they've been dragged along by uh, the social media era and it's time to modernize we'll talk to you about the threadbare firm we touched on mm. it in just a moment but i'm absolutely delighted to also be joined here on talk tv by esteemed royal commentator Michael Cole. A very good morning to you, Michael. Good, good morning to you, gentlemen. Uh, quite a morning. Quite the, a morning. The Princess of Wales will be waking up this morning, at, at least knowing that she's put one ordeal behind her, because, um, as I think the three of us do know, and many other people know, it, it's not easy to deliver a message directly to the unblinking eye of a camera. Uh, but she did so yesterday, and she did so brilliantly. She got the tone right, she got the words right, and um, it spoke to her great humanity that even in her own ordeal, she was able to reach out to people worldwide who've suffered cancer and are still recovering from it, uh, thinking of them in a very heartfelt way. Uh, Difficult to do, but accomplished very well. And now, of course, the greater ordeal is to come, uh, recovering from a condition which we are told and we're thankful to hear uh, is recoverable from. Um, and she will do so, of course, after this message with uh, the worldwide goodwill of people who will recognize her courage uh, and her forbearance and her strength uh, in dealing with something that nobody at the age of 42 or at any age uh, should have to endure. But there she is. She's accepted the reality of it all. And uh, as I say, I think uh, in the circumstances, uh, the, the matter was handled brilliantly. Of course, historic. We've never, ever heard from any royal personage personally about their health, certainly not in a video message uh, like this one, which was recorded on Wednesday. One has to wonder whether that was a direct reaction to the uh, allegations of a data breach at the London Clinic. Of course, uh, nobody has been arrested. It is a serious crime under the 
uh, Data Protection Act of 2018 to access other people's records without the express permission of the holder of that data. And in that case, that's the London Clinic. So um, difficult times for the princess ahead, but one ordeal uh, triumphantly overcome uh, and done so with great dignity, with a great deal of calm uh, and a great deal of reassurance. Uh, and I'm sure you and I and all people watching this program will wish her well for a speedy and complete recovery. Indeed, a speedy and complete recovery. Michael, she emphatically and on her own terms shut down the conspiracy theories and all the trolls and all the lies and all now they're coming out and apologising. But now that she has created a new news cycle, we're going to have to continually hear from the palace with credible updates or the conspiracy theories and vacuum will open up again. Yes, it's very good to have put the trolls back in their holes and we hope they stay there. It probably won't stop them in their game. It won't stop them though, will it? It won't stop them in their game, but it will stop them being believed. I mean, how difficult this must be for any young woman, any young mother uh, to recover, to hear this terrible news and then have to broach it with her children in such a way that it doesn't take away their confidence <clears throat> to carry on with their own normal lives. Uh, difficult, difficult, difficult. And she's doing that uh, in, in the glare of a spotlight that is never, ever switched off. I think um, <clears throat> what will happen now is that in this country, and I think in, in all respectable news organisations around the world, uh, she will be given uh, that peace and, and quiet uh, to, to recover. Uh, uh, anything less uh, would be, I think, uh, severely criticised, and rightly so. It has been a horrible ordeal for her, and made worse by the interest, shall we put it in, in the most general terms, with the interest, the obsession, uh, the nastiness, the cruelty, the vileness of um, stories which have been uh, peddled on the internet. <clears throat> and I suppose some fools might have believed them. Uh, it, she has put the record straight, done so with great dignity. And I might say even <clears throat> on your channel, please excuse me, I've said in other programs that I, I thought the only way to scotch these rumours was to come out with a brief bulletin, to, no need to go into all the details, but in outline saying what was what was afoot. And indeed I said that maybe even a short video message uh, from herself might have been the way to do it. And I didn't know, I don't know whether that was listened to, I don't know whether other councils prevailed, but certainly the way it was done could not have been done better. And I hope that that will at least tick off one ordeal that she's had to face. Now she has to face the greater ordeal of, of the chemotherapy and, and getting back to full robust and complete good health. Uh, amen to that. And Julian mm. Drucker is also with us. Julian wants to ask you a question, Michael. I was going to say, Michael, yeah. I mean, the late Queen, Queen Elizabeth, used to say, I have to be seen to be believed. I mean, mm. my goodness, yesterday, that was the embodiment of that, wasn't it? To, uh, to see and to hear her on that bench describing what she's been through. I mean, we have never seen a member of the royal family speaking, not only so emotively, but just the actual content of, of what they were mm. saying. Yeah, she's a, she's a woman of the modern world, and, and that's the way things are done now. In fact, the Queen did say, say to me on one occasion, she said, 50% of my job is to be seen. I mean, uh, well, that's why she always wore bright colours. They not, weren't necessarily to her taste, but she knew <laughs> she had to. No, they weren't. And, and hats and so on. That explains a lot. Thank you for that, Michael. <laughs> no, no she, she knew that that would make her more visible, and that was part of the job. 50% of the job, she said to me, was uh, is, is being seen, getting out and about. Uh, and I have lots of stories that could, uh, for another time, uh, that could il illustrate that. Yes. No, I think uh, they've grasped this particular nettle, and uh, I think it will make it easier for them because uh, uh, battling, if you do battle cancer, I'm not quite sure, I've always been rather dubious about that verb, but enduring cancer yeah. uh, and coping with your life as best as possible uh, cannot have been made uh, any easier by knowing people were sniping and speculating in in quite vicious and nasty ways about you yourself and your health and even your marriage uh, which i think was uh, the absolute pits but 
um, she's come through this and she will come through this again. And the messages she's received um, from her brother in particular, but for from world leaders and, and others, they will go home with her. She made that clear at the very beginning of her statement yesterday that uh, she was appreciated the huge amount of support. She was already the the most popular member of the, the the royal family, and I'm sure her popularity will skyrocket now. In America, uh, her approval rating, even before this, was 35%. That meant that 35% more people liked her than, than felt otherwise, and I'm sure that that will go up. Um, you know, courage in the face of adversity is a very moving thing to see, and I think we saw it yesterday. Indeed we did. Michael Cole, thank you very much for your time this morning. Steve Royal correspondent joining us here on the show and really there is only one game in town and uh, you know a lot of people are saying oh stop talking about her give her a privacy and we are giving her privacy what we're doing is we are being a sounding board to the nation because um, if there's one ever present that is constantly a part of our lives it seems for all of us either we've suffered from it personally or uh, our nearest and dearest have succumbed to it or or live with it uh, it's cancer and um, I think that to see someone so high and mighty, someone so beautiful, someone so in the public glare, one of the most famous people in the world, dealing with it with such uh, gracefulness um, is a source of comfort, isn't it? And Julian, you've come up with this uh, cracking story, which is from the Times on page five. Mm. It's analysis, but an anonymous writer um, the news of this cancer is devastating. Uh, in fact, it's Kate Mancy, I should say, Kate says. However, the shock of Catherine's diagnosis at the age of 42 will reverberate through the organisation as a whole, because, of course, the king is 75. Mm. She, he's also undergoing treatment for cancer. He's away from public duties himself. And she will require, Kate, an, a much longer period away from official duties than as initially said. So who's left? Yeah, so King Charles, mm. before he was king, was always talking about this slimmed down monarchy. He um, didn't mean this, though. No, he didn't. So I didn't realize. So the <laughs> Princess Royal, who's uh, 73, uh, she remains at the top of the polls, it says in the Times, in terms of the number of engagements she carries out each year. So she, in a documentary last year, Princess Anne said, I didn't see that she said, I think slimmed down was said in a day uh, when there were a few more people around. It doesn't sound like a good idea from where I'm standing. I would say I'm not quite sure what else we can do. I mean, wasn't she proved to be right? They are basically running out of people to do these engagements at the moment um, with Prince Andrew sort of on the naughty step. Uh, Prince Harry isn't around. So it is left to the likes of Princess Anne, who's always done lots and lots of engagements. Um, Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh, who you were uh, talking about before, that is uh, Edward and Sophie, isn't it? Um, and, you know... There's just, they are running out of royals at the moment. William has apparently spoken about wanting to do fewer things anyway um, in his role of Prince of Wales. This is before Kate's illness. He wants to do fewer things, but with big impact. He spoke about the Middle East recently. So that's the sort of direction of travel in terms of what he wants to do. Um, but it does, as it says here in the Times, it does make the firm look threadbare if you saw Camilla on her own in Belfast on Wednesday and Thursday of this week she just frankly looks a bit lonely you know in the space where Charles would normally be um, you know we see her lady in waiting or whatever the term she uses now but it just looks a bit thin unfortunately at the moment it does and you know I think uh, this is a sort of a personal thing I'm glad that we've got a head of state that we can believe in, that is a human being that, that is seemingly mostly apolitical. The Queen was completely apolitical. Because in France, to open up these things, it'd be Macron. And he's a bit divisive, isn't he? So it's nice that we have a system where the head of state is, I'm, I really mean this, is an unelected person that we can um, project our own best uh, goodwill upon and at times like this where our two most loved members of the royals uh, have succumbed to cancer and that we wish them every success and well-being and for a full recovery uh, that it actually only serves to enhance our love and support 
for the royal family. Now, I know I'm not talking for everyone, but I think even for those of us who are Republicans, we have a sympathy, even Owen Jones this morning, 03444991000. Now, after the break, uh, Dr. René Handekamp will be in the studio to look at the medical side. Of course, René will be alongside David at the top of the hour with The Breakfast Show at 7, but a bit more uh, bedside uh, mannership from <laughs> René after this short break. Stay tuned. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat, go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. for the first time ever. So thank you very much for being so frank about your lives. Julian Drucker's here in the studio, but also uh, next on the agenda here at uh, Talk TV, it's the David, the David and Renee breakfast show right here on Talk TV. And Renee's in the studio. Hello. Hello, Renee. Lovely to see you. An earlier start for me than usual. Is, is that all right? <laughs> it's fine. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> uh, now, um, Susan from Leicester, who told us her complete health background, which was a trauma but she sort of laughed through it she which did, was am it. amazing and what a stoic woman she is said one of the big issues is telling your young children what you've got and it effectively ends their childhood Renee, that is a personal story for you too, isn't it? It is. So I had a cancer diagnosis in my thyroid when I was um, 33 and my son was 11. And um, it was it was a difficult thing to do because what you want to do is you want to keep them in the loop about what's going on and why mummy's going to be in hospital. And I was in hospital four times and that I'm going to be here forever, but also not to terrify them and to keep their childhood. Now, I think it does depend on what you've got going on. And I was able over the period of 
probably about six months to actually kind of bring it all to an end in terms of surgeries and treatments. Um, but it was very scary for my son, who was a big, a big, tall, strapping 11 year old. But I knew how much it affected him on the day when he came in and said he'd found a lump in his neck. Right. Now, obviously, mummy's lump was in her neck. Right. And that just showed me how much actually it was playing on his mind more than I thought it was. Yes, he was like imbibing yeah. your illness into himself in a sort of form of yeah. physical sympathy. And I had to take him to a doctor for a doctor to tell him that he was fine. What was it? It was a lymph node. Right. But okay. it was important, I think, for someone else to actually say to him, this is fine and what it is. But you have to think about the children. And I think with Kate, I think that's the most important thing. And I think that's what she's been trying to do. She didn't want her children going to school on the first day of her diagnosis and having to hear from their friends and their parents and the newspapers what was wrong with mummy and was she going to live and all that speculation. She wanted to control it. And that's absolutely what she should be allowed to do. And a couple of decades on, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. you're, still uh, here. Still here. <laughs> Fit, healthy and beautiful. Thank you. Can we talk about chemotherapy? Yes. Because what's it like in 2024? Has it got better? So I think it's got <clears throat> much more individualised. Mm -hmm. So whereas I think 20 years ago, I mean, I didn't have chemotherapy. I had radioactive iodine. Right. So I think... Right, radioactive iodine. Yeah. which has a serious potential consequence. Yeah, it? as all treatments do. You've got right. to weigh up, you know, the pros and cons of everything and what might happen in the future. But I think 20 years ago or even 30 years ago, chemotherapy was really just a blanket. Let's throw Domestus at this and see if we can actually wipe out whatever might be there. The problem with that, obviously, is it wipes out healthy cells as well as unhealthy cells. And now as technology advances, we learn more about DNA um, tumours, what they actually have on them that might respond to chemotherapy, it's much more targeted. So we can narrow down that field of damage around the outside of it. That's not to say that there isn't sometimes obviously more damage than we need, but it's actually much narrower now, much kinder. Um, it's still gruelling for people and um, quite often there are side effects that we wouldn't wish on anyone. But at the same time, we know that we can keep those to a minimum for the person being treated. Mm. And uh, Julian, I wonder if you've uh, got any sort of personal sort of stories or, or questions for, for Renee this morning. Yeah, I mean, I've known relatives who've had cancer treatment. I mean, with chemotherapy, <coughs> most people, you know, what they know, what they think of is hair loss. And the people I've known who've had chemo haven't lost their hair. Is that That's due to particular types it is. of chemo. We don't know in this case because we don't no. know what cancer we're talking about. Um, but that is often one of the hardest parts, isn't it? Yeah, I think, you know, I think especially for women, actually, mm. I'm not belittling it for men, but for women, hair is a really important part of your being, yourself, your image. So to lose your hair is kind of, you know, the last straw. And I'll give you an idea of how important it is, the things that are different to people. I didn't cry through all of this. I just approached it as I do life, you know, OK, challenge, let's get on with it. We'll do this and it will be fine. And the day I cried was when they told me that I couldn't give blood anymore. Right. That was a step too far, right. that nobody wanted my blood. And so I think that just goes to show how individual what's important to you is and what will be the Rubicon of crossing the line. So I think hair is often a very important part of things because it, it shows the world that you've got something going on as well when you might want to keep it private. But there are other things. Lots of people get rashes from chemotherapy and from radiotherapy, actually. There's radiotherapy dermatitis. And those kind of things can be absolutely debilitating you know colitis mm. you know so it, it's difficult there's lots of side effects that you have to deal with it's not just dealing with the diagnoses and the treatment it's the side effects of that is it always weekly i mean again it depends no no it? it depends it depends entirely on the cancer right okay and of course um and this is not the case with princess catherine but in in the terminally ill people come off chemotherapy to improve their last few months of yes. quality of life as well, don't they? Yeah. So if, if, for example, you're having chemotherapy that makes you so nauseous and sick that you actually can't even leave the house and you know you've only got a few months to live, you have to be able to have an honest conversation and thought process about, well, actually, if this really is the end, how do I want to spend yeah. it? Mm -hmm. And talking of beauty, and there's no one, I think, not even in Hollywood that is inspected for her beauty than... Princess Catherine. Yeah. I mean, we all did it yesterday. We all looked at the colour of her skin. Is she more pale than she was? Is she thinner than she was? All those kind of things that you kind of just kind of yeah. don't really want to think about, but they're there in your head. 
forevermore she's going to be compared uh, with life after yesterday to life before it, isn't she? Yes, but I mean, look, let's all hope, you know, she'll get through this and she'll re restore herself to the, the vibrant beauty that she is. She's one of the most beautiful women in the world, without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. Um, yes, OK, if I had... Did William punch above his weight? <laughs> I think he did. I know he's going to be king, but even so... <laughs> I think he probably did. But he was always going to, wasn't he? You're going to. I mean, if you're king, you know. <laughs> put out the stops. But no, seriously. Um, we wish her well, don't we? We uh, just want a full recovery. She's our future queen. She's our future queen. And I think the most important thing is she should be allowed to run this story in the way that she wants to run it. Indeed. Well, I hope that she maintains that control in every single way. That's Dr Renee Handekamp, and she's going to be here after 7 o'clock alongside Dr David Bull. What better morning to have two doctors on your breakfast show right here on Talk TV as we go to Julian and we talk mm. about The Guardian. So, so far, I'm sure yes. this will appear in David and Renee's show, but what do we know so far about the diagnosis? How deep has your on-the-record yes. um, gone in terms of understanding what we're dealing with? Um, all they've sort of said is that she started the chemotherapy in late February. I suppose I was asking Rene about whether it's weekly or not. So basically she had a month of treatment so far. Um, so this is, you know, this is the early stages. Um, and The Guardian just collates what we do now. I mean, it's basically that. I mean, we know more about Catherine than we do about Charles. They've never spoken That's about right. Charles's treatment, That's right. apart from saying he is having treatment. Um, and they talked of uh, preventative chemotherapy. I wasn't sure if that was a particular, if that gave a particular angle on what type of chemotherapy. Was Renault's been saying, you know, that's just a description of any sort of chemotherapy, basically. Um, so you know, they've put some information out there. They have obviously, completely, understandably demanded that there isn't any further sort of speculation. They haven't said what type of cancer, as they didn't with Charles, no. and. You know, as you said, it um, it opens up a new news cycle, um, and people... which they're going to have to yes, manage. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. the conspiracy theories will come out again. We That's need to problem, have a in front of camera. We need William to be cheerful. We need to get yeah. the kids out of the public spotlight. And now, as I think, for a long while, you know, yeah. they need to be growing up. Mm. Uh, 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 lest Susan and Lester's. Um, um, idea comes true, the idea that they have... I mean, I know it's their royal duty and they're being primed to be king or queen yes. along the way, but even so, um, this is something that no child should have to go through. And the best wishes from all over the world have come flooding in, even from Montecito in California. Yes, they um, issued that via Harper's and Queen's magazine. Well, this is Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan. Well, the question um, is, who's, who's the Harper and who's the Queen? Exactly. That's the question. Um, I can't see their quote at the moment. It was about healing and health. Healing and health. Yeah. Uh, that came out um, mm. yesterday evening. The Sun collates all the messages from uh, all the people you'd expect, like Gary Lineker. I mean, what, <laughs> else, can, what else can you tweet apart from wishing her a full... Uh, well, at least it gives him a break from all the other bile he puts out on Twitter. Yes. Um, I mean, yeah, everybody in the world has been uh, comment, uh, commenting on it. President Joe Biden, I don't think this was on camera. Was he giving a press comment yesterday? He commented on it. Put down the ice cream, Joe. Yeah. Um, Keir Starm, I mean, all the people you'd expect. I'd say that one of the most um, interesting comments, actually, came through uh, yesterday evening when we were on air, and um, it was from the head of the NH NHS chief executive, Amanda Pritchard, it was quite good and she said about speaking out about it is really brave um, and we saw with Charles didn't we the uh, NHS website more and more people were googling um, this is when he had his prostate examination wasn't it um, but it does lead to people checking themselves and talking about of cancer and th this is the legacy of it already um, that you know just the conversation Indeed. You said about King George the Sixth that was never spoken about. I mean, that is obviously not the case anymore, is it? No, and it can't be indeed. Julian, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. And time is beating us, but fear not, Talk TV fans, because after 7 o'clock, it's 
Rene Hunderkamp and Dr. <laughs> David Bull. Welcome. A, a very good morning to you. How are you? Lovely yeah. to see you too. Very smart, both of you, this we, morning. We're doing our best, but well, then it's the weekend. <laughs> it, well, it is the weekend. Obviously, we'll be talking about Kate, but I don't want to dwell on this. I just want to, you know, acknowledge that this is a woman, a mother, going through what many people in this country go through. One in two of us gets cancer. So uh, I agree with all of the above. Anything that me makes you get tested earlier, that gets seek medical help and so on, is really important. Now, we will be talking to Carol Sequoia, Cora, uh, who is a, an eminent uh, oncologist and former director of the World Health Organization Cancer Program. But we've got all the usual stuff that you'd expect from our a ridiculous uh, Saturday as well. The head to head, we've got Sam Dowler coming in, John Elliott, MBE, will be popping across to the United States. Caroline Faraday will be joining us from over there. I think she's been in Palm Springs actually today. Maybe she should stay there. <laughs> or maybe I should go there. there. And something for the weekend with Lottie Hume. Steve Denyer's away today. So Lottie who is the senior reporter at The Sun will be joining us, so lots more besides and of course fascinating facts, everything you would expect on a Saturday. How lovely it's your date between now and 10 o'clock, it's David and Renee right here on Talk TV it's been a very moving